To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. I think that every business owner, entrepreneur, and rebelpreneur are motivated to improve their life and the lives of everyone that they meet. And to do that, you have to really have an attitude of boldness. There are a lot of challenges in the world that would try to rob you and make you afraid. And if you can overcome those challenges, then you are well on your way to success. We talk a lot about mindset. Today's guest is really going to help us because she has developed a very powerful strategy for helping people to reach their potential. I'm speaking with Sally Holder. She is an award-winning attorney, a nationally recognized public speaker, author, podcaster, and business coach. And she coined a very interesting term, hitting rock middle. Instead of rock bottom, hitting rock middle. What a great (laughs) turn of phrase. I love that. She also developed the Be Bolder strategy for helping people reach their potential. Sally helps businesses, entrepreneurs, and employees identify what's getting in their way and how to break down those barriers to success. Really thrilled to have you on the show today, Sally Holder. Welcome to Rebel Renewable Radio. Thank you for having me, Ralph. It's an honor to be here. I am delighted to be able to connect with you and with your audience. I'm so excited that you could uh, take some time to, to spend with us because you were, you've were you been on a pretty uh, fast and furious book tour here the last few weeks. That is very true. It has been very fast and furious. I have been to 25 cities across the United States, um, from East Coast to West, North to South. It's been a really fun experience connecting with entrepreneurs um, of all different kinds all over the country and just hearing what's really troubling them and what's preventing them from reaching their greatest potential. You coined the term, and I, I love these turns of phrase because they're so interesting, hitting rock middle. And that's a turn of phrase as opposed to hitting rock bottom, um, (laughs) which is really, really neat. Tell us what inspired that. How did you come up with that? And and what does it mean? Well, thank you. I'm so glad that it really resonates. And I always can tell that, you know, people really get it when they kind of give a little chuckle to it, because I can tell that it has some resonance. They understand exactly what I mean. And maybe they felt that, um, you know, rock middle moment themselves once or twice in their life or career. And what it really means to me is that you've achieved some form of external success, right? Something that the world would say is wonderful and that it comes oftentimes with monetary success and a title, but it really ends up lacking the true fulfillment that makes us feel the feelings that we're really craving, those feelings of contentment and joy and happiness, the things that we learn later on in our lives and careers that really are absolutely critical to um, to really living life, right? You can't continue with the external success, in my mind, when it completely lacks that internal fulfillment. And so I felt that feeling for a very long time myself as an attorney practicing law for the second largest labor and employment law firm in the country. I had a very successful career. The only problem was I hated it. (laughs) (laughs) And so each time I went to friends or family or colleagues and said, hey, you know, I really don't like what I'm doing. Their response to me was always, but you're so successful. And so I was often discouraged from making any type of change. And so I wanted to create a phrase that gave people the permission slip to create the change from this successful place so that they would know that 
this place is real. They're not alone. And that if they want to create something different from that space, just like I did, then they can and that they should. Hmm. Very exciting. And and I think you've been uh, looking over my shoulder, reading my diary. <laughs> you seem to know all about me because no, there I, I am <laughs> I'm I hitting, hitting rock middle. Well, I, I think that's uh, very interesting. Um, the hitting rock bottom story is where nothing works and you're starting over basically with nothing. You're not talking about starting over with nothing. You're talking about the courage and the boldness to step out of what other people consider to be pretty successful. But internally, you realize that there's more to life. There's more to your purpose than what you're living. And you're teaching people how to reach their potential by stepping out of that safe, successful place and and really taking a risk. Absolutely. You know, I tell a lot of people this, that I think, and I'm going to challenge you a little bit here to see what you think, um, that rock middle is oftentimes for people more detrimental than even hitting rock bottom. Hmm. And here's why. Because when you hit rock bottom, at least then you have everyone in your circle, everyone in your life coming at you saying, change, come on, let me help you, right? Let me help you get to a better place. Let me move things around. They will go out of their way to help you create a, a better life for yourself. Very, yeah, that, that's very true. And yeah. and so you've got lots of support there at the exactly. bottom, but it, it sounds like when you're in the rock middle place that people are like, what are you crazy? How can you not be happy? <laughs> exactly. Yes. In rock middle, people come at you and say, you are nuts. I'm sure you're just having a bad day, right? It's, it's just, you know, oh, let's just go out and have a drink. Don't worry about it. Work's supposed to be terrible. You're supposed to hate it, right? <laughs> and they say all those things to you that really aren't true, right? Instead, you can love what you do. You can have success and fulfillment. You just need to do it in a different way than the way that you're doing it right now. And you know, go and figure out what your purpose is. And that's what that be bolder framework and strategy really is all about is then to give people the tools to get started on figuring out what their purpose is and executing on that. Excellent. And and so you're the author of Hitting Rock Middle. That's the title of your book. And you're founding a movement around that beyond rock middle movement. Um, Tell us a little bit about, uh, the motivation behind that movement, that the, the book is like the manifesto of the movement. True. Um, you know, I started going, as I said before, to all of these different cities. And I was speaking mainly to entrepreneurs and people coming, you know, from the corporate world and attempting to create substantial change in their lives and careers and saying, you know, I don't know how to do it. I feel rather lonely when I attempt to create this type of change. And so this movement, the BRIM, um, which stands for the Beyond Rock Middle Movement, is intended and it really came about as a solution to these problems that I was seeing so many other entrepreneurs experience of that loneliness, of that lack of connection, of the lack of camaraderie when they were wanting to create change. And so this is an opportunity to bring people together all over the country into one platform. So I have a member portal on my website and it brings all of them together to have conversations and coaching from me on a weekly basis and also uh, the communication with another community of people who are creating change too. So very exciting. And you know, when, when I have people on the show, I always ask them, what is the greatest problem that you solve or what's the biggest obstacle that the people that you help, that they're trying to overcome and and how do you help them to do that? I think you may have touched on it. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like one of the biggest challenges that you help people to face as they make this step is to overcome that feeling of isolation, the feeling of loneliness, that I'll be all by myself, that I'm leaving my social network, that that I've grown the professional relationships over the years, and now I'm leaving all of that behind, and I'm going out into this 
wild blue yonder, this wild, wild west of entrepreneurship. And I'm afraid that people will forget me, that I'll be lonely. And I'm not sure that I'd like those feelings. Is that kind of a typical experience for people struggling with this? That is a very typical experience. Um, We live in such a black and white um, universe where we're taught to believe that we're choosing between, you know, uh, this or that, right? The corporate world or the entrepreneurial world. And oftentimes what I tell people is that we don't need to swing the pendulum from zero to 10. We, during your membership in this community, in the brim, are, are going to walk you through the process of really being able to, you know, move the needle from where you are to the middle of the road all the way into entrepreneurship and do it gradually and purposefully so that you're not making some kind of giant leap off the end of a diving board. You know, I kind of jokingly say in the book, but it's so true. Like, you know, you don't have to, some people do, but you don't have to leap into entrepreneurship. And if you are, and that doesn't feel good, you know, I I don't know why you're leaping anywhere. Like, let's help transition you into it. And um, doing it with a community of other like-minded people is a great way to do that. And, and, you know, dull the experience of the isolation that you fear so much. Um, In fact, so it's interesting that you brought up it in that context as well. I was just listening to a podcast the other day talking about the fact that, you know, um, experiencing isolation is actually terrible for our emotional intelligence and for our biology. It, in fact, has the um, exact um, experience of smoking nearly 15 cigarettes if we allow ourselves to be in isolation too often. Wow. And it's also the place where fear and doubt and worry grow. So they feed upon themselves when you're in isolation. I jokingly, just for short term, say me on me is never good, right? <laughs> but when when I can talk about other things and I have to voice it out loud with other people, it suddenly, you know, changes the experience. And so that's exactly what the the brim is intended to give people. Hmm. I, I really love that. And, and I think you've probably discovered this as I have in coaching relationships that very often Where people get into trouble is listening to their own thoughts and not having a feedback loop, not verbalizing. I mean, why verbalize it when I'm just thinking to myself all the time? And we we fall into that analysis paralysis. We are consumed with our own thoughts and feelings and emotions. And very often a coach can simply be a sounding board, a feedback loop. And for a lot of people, that's all the support they need to really sort through those feelings and thoughts and actually kind of uh, make some progress where they couldn't make progress by themselves. I couldn't agree with you more. It's so well said. I, I love the way that you put that. You know, I typically tell clients it's an opportunity for you, you know, to see yourself from a different vantage point. You know, we can't see ourselves, right? Self can't see self. So I can't see what is obvious to another human being. And so when I have the opportunity, though, to express even what my revenue streams will be, you know, and what my fears are, they can help point out other opportunities that might exist for me that I wouldn't otherwise be able to see because my fears are holding me back so much. You know, I always say it gives me an opportunity to put on a different pair of glasses to see the world through um, because I get to see it through someone else's eyes. And that is a beautiful experience. Um, And it has been such a joy for me to get to experience as well. I have my own business coach. I don't know what I would do without her. You know, I I believe so strongly in the experience. It's changed my life and, and I enjoy thoroughly getting to help other people reach their potential in the same way that she's helped me reach mine. Mm, Absolutely. So it, 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 um, I I think those thoughts and fears that I'll be alone, um, the, the solitude, um, if, if you take advantage of those networks and, and the support systems and the coaching programs and the different things that are available, um, in, in a community, you can actually duplicate that and replicate that uh, community uh, in online 
and perhaps even offline, I guess the message that I want to communicate to people is that you you can be in business for yourself without being in business by yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, entrepreneurship doesn't have to be a lonely experience. There are so many different ways to be able to achieve the feeling of camaraderie. You know, it can be through my experience that I've created online with the brim, but I'm also here having this Skype conversation from a co-working facility, which has also been a wonderful thing for me to get to be a part of as an entrepreneur, you know, meetups, you know, uh, all different types of things like that. We just have to put ourselves out there and participate in them. Lots of opportunities. And um, so that I, I want to get to this strategy that you developed called Be Bolder. And see if if you have some tips, hacks, tips, tricks, whatever, that would help our listeners to be able to get over uh, this, this, not just this obstacle of loneliness and isolation, but uh, to really understand what is that barrier? What is holding them back? What is the obstacle that they need to overcome? And then how can we do that boldly with your Be Bolder strategy? Sure. So the way that I always recommend people kind of get started by flipping the script. And what I mean by that is that instead, you know, we tend to get very overwhelmed by looking at all of the items on our to-do list, looking at all of the opportunities that sit in front of us as a new entrepreneur, you know, or, um, you know, even someone with uh, a couple years under their belt. They'll look at all of the different pathways that are available to them and say, I just don't know which one is right for me. And so the first part of the Be Boulder strategy is about beginning with the end in mind. And so my best tip that I would give your listeners is to start by imagining the end of their lives. Ask yourself the question, instead of what is it that you want to do tomorrow, ask yourself, who is it that you ultimately want to become, right? At the end of your life, imagine that. The person standing there that I would see, you know, running into at a restaurant, and I would say to you, congratulations, you have achieved everything you have ever wanted in your life. Who are you? <laughs> and what, yeah. are you, what are you doing, right? I mean, are you the the man that has just sold a multi-million dollar company? Are you the woman who is standing there surrounded by three of her kids and two of her grandkids? Right. Are you the, you know, uh, gentleman who just returned, you know, from traveling the world with a backpack on his shoulder to see his family for the first time in two months? Right. All of those different people took different paths to get to that place. Right. And so what you would need to do today in order to create that future is very different. But what we tend to do is begin on a path, start going, and then just hope with our fingers crossed that we end up where we want to be. <laughs> and my <laughs> suggestion is let's not do it that way. Let's start with the end, imagining that person that has every bit of fulfillment and joy and contentment that you can possibly imagine, that you can picture your best case scenario, and you're standing there telling me that you've had the best life you could have lived. What have you done? And then work your way backwards, right? If that person has sold the multi-million dollar company, what company was it? What did they do? What, and if you don't know what it is, at least be descriptive about the type of life it created, right? Was it freedom? Was it flexibility? Was it seven figures? Was it travel? I don't know. But for me, had I done this exercise, I probably never would have practiced law. Hmm. Because the things that were valuable to me and still are, are creating significant income and wealth for my family, um, having travel as a part of my life and career, freedom, flexibility. None of those things are things that are achievable within the practice of law. <laughs> so if I had thought really strategically with the end in mind, I probably could have saved myself 13 years. But, you know, that was the path I needed to take. 
But when I ask my my clients this and friends and whoever I may be talking to, all they can generally tell me is what's in front of them right now. And they have no idea what the end looks like. And I think that we spend way too much time, you know, hemming and hawing over what's in front of us and never thinking about the end, because that's essentially where we're trying to go. That's essentially exactly what we're hoping to to have is this beautiful end story. And yet we're not looking at the end strategically at all. Mm, I love that. As a strategist, that really resonates with me. And I wish more people were like you, Sally, so that they could look at life strategically, look at their business and figure it out in advance before they go to the trouble of building something, creating something, spending years and years and millions of dollars building something that takes them where they don't want to go. Take a few minutes and think about what does the end look like? What is the end game? What is the exit strategy? And by exit, I mean, when you exit your life, what did it all mean? What what was the purpose of it all? And you can do this thought experiment and go t- to the future, go to the end, visualize that experience that feel that and then come back into the present. And as you said, Sally, work backwards to say, okay, well, how did I get there? And what has to happen before I do that? And what had to happen before I did that? And you work your way back into the present. And then that gives you such motivation and inspiration. Uh, to, it gives you a to-do list. Yes. For today. Exactly. So it's yeah. very practical. It, it's not uh, pie in the sky and, and wishing on a cloud. It's a very strategic exercise that helps you to get focus gives you clarity, which is so important, but also prevents you from going in the wrong direction, doing things that you ultimately don't want to do for people that you don't really like. And uh, I, I just love that approach. I, I love the strategic thinking that that goes into that strategy there. Sally, very wonderful. Uh, I know you're in the middle of a book tour. Her time is getting low, but I want to give you an opportunity to talk about as if you don't already have enough going on, if you've got anything else going on that's or coming up soon that's got you really excited that you'd like to share with our listeners. Well, I think the the most exciting thing for me right now certainly is building out this entire community of the brim. We still have um, some memberships left. We will fill up probably very soon, but um, there is an opportunity to still join. So I hope that people will head to my website and be able to check that out. Um, and I'm always available to, to chat more with them about it to determine whether it's a fit for them, but we're building an amazing community there. Um, if you want an opportunity for um, someone to walk you through that strategic um you know, the creation of those goals and some of those be bolder strategies. Then I have a workbook that coincides with my book that is downloadable. You can get that on my website as well. And then I'm really proud of um, an online course about mindset for specifically the entrepreneur um, that has some very tactical steps. As you can tell, I am a strategic thinker as well. And, you know, I think that's the lawyer in me that says, you know, I need some tools that I can utilize on a daily basis. Hmm. And that online course is launching this week on my website as well. So all different ways to participate and grow. And like I said, I just really love to be able to support um, the entrepreneurial journey. Absolutely. Well, you you definitely have uh, the strategies and the tools to help people to succeed. I encourage our listeners to go check out that uh, check out the workbook and the online course, as well as Sally's book, Hitting Rock Middle and the Beyond Rock Middle Movement. Check all of that stuff out at SallyHolder.com. It's S-A-L-L-I-E, SallyHolder.com. And we'll have that link on the Rebelpreneur website as well, so you can click right through. Uh, Sally, this has really been a wonderful conversation. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to leave us with? I think I'll just leave you with one quote that always made a difference for me, which is, be intentional on 
your goals, but fluid on the how, right? Mm -hmm. Intentional on your destination, but fluid on how you get there. And I think that that um, has been something that I consistently remind myself of is once you set up that beautiful destination, allow yourself to be fluid on, on a daily basis on how you get there. And you'll be much more forgiving of yourself as an entrepreneur, as things kind of go up and down, as we all know, the entrepreneurial experience really is. Mm. So, yeah. um, and we're all there with you. You're not alone. Mm. Very important because it, as you say, um, you know, people define success differently and there's more than one way to get to where you want to be. So if it's not working the way you're trying, try something else. All you get, there's no such thing as failure, just feedback. And then you know uh, what doesn't work and what does work through the process of actually putting things into practice. So don't analyze and don't um, don't mistake thought for action. Be bold. Take the action and uh, reach out to Sally Holder at SallyHolder.com to find out more about her great tools and support for people like you. Sally Holder is an award-winning attorney, nationally recognized public speaker, author, podcaster, and business coach who coined the term hitting rock middle, and she developed the Be Bolder strategy for helping people reach their potential. Find out more at sallyholder.com. Sally, thank you so much for being on Rebelpreneur Radio today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Such a joy. Thank you. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.